got a unique situation in that a lot of people that play football within with within this community come back and they give back. I think some of their some of their parents are here and they play and uh, it just seems like it's an ongoing thing. But yeah, I think there's a lot of people that that are from the community that that have been here for years and years and they give back in some way and if nothing else we're just coming on Friday night watching the football game. I think the community's always been very supportive of Eastern High School football. It's uh you know in fact maybe years ago it used to be a little bit more so than it is now. I know it's hard to believe but I think back in the day in the late seventies it was kinda like when you watch that movie Rudy and and they sit there and that club came in and painted the helmets every week. There was actually a group of businessmen in Mevin that would meet weekly and would uh, paint helmets and do whatever Coach Walker and Coach Brady needed done. Uh, laundry wasn't done by the coach. It was done by the local dry cleaners and field maintenance and, and such things like that wasn't done by Coach Brady. It was done by, by people in the community. Uh, I think Friday nights were a happening thing. I uh, started here in the late 1970s, I guess it was probably 1976, and I graduated in 1980. Spent five or six of the best years of my life at East Carolina University. I actually started teaching here in 1985. When I first started teaching here, uh, Cecil Kaysen was our principal. I remember our interview, was he was on the back of a tractor, and, and I went along beside him as we spoke. Uh, he hired me to do the in-school suspension, and I was also the head football coach at Woodlawn Middle School and the head baseball coach at the middle school. Jimmy Tigg was the head football coach here at the time. And, uh, you know, it was it, football wasn't great then because we struggled a little bit. There was a guy named Jim Orr who was the head football coach here at Eastern. And uh, he had, had come in. He was from Ashtabula, Ohio, outstanding football coach, but kind of – I don't know. It just didn't never really click. But on his staff, uh, I was kind of the guy that did the washing, the drying, the folding of the clothes, the mowing of the field, the mowing of the practice field, the lining of the field. Cecil Kaysen was our principal. Uh, he elevated me to be the interim head coach. And uh, our first game, we got to play Cummins High School, which was the defending state champions. And it came down to a field goal at the end, and we lost. Uh, I literally cried after that game because, you know, our kids deserve to win, and, and we didn't. But it's, it's something that I always remember. We went on to win the last game against Southern Alamance. And and during that off season, I got hired to be the head football coach here in 92. I got married that year and became the head football coach that year. Try to treat everybody the way you treat your own kid because I think that early on in your career, you kind of do things that might be stupid or might just be, I don't know, crazy, maybe because you saw it on a movie or something, you know. But, you know, I think once you have kids and you start, you know, raising them, you kind of your coaching style changes a little bit. With JT graduating and being into the coaching profession, I think it's always been a kind of a, a thought that, hey, how, how cool would it be? And it is. I mean, I think that going home, talking about football and talking about your 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 team and your players, and and I think it's been a, I think it's been refreshing, and I think it's kind of kind of got me over the top a little bit. Yeah, I think that uh, you know a lot of players have gone through here. Some good, some bad. Some people come back sometimes and say they played here, and and, and you kind of don't remember who they are. Uh, but most of them, I think you do remember because there's a special bond that you make be, by being a coach and a, and a player that, that lasts a lifetime. And you may not always remember their, their name, but once they tell you who they are, there's, some, there's a story or something you can remember about. 2004, we didn't win a football game. We were 0-11. But I don't want to say it's our worst team because I think a lot of lessons were learned that year on how to do things, how not to do things. And I think our kids worked extremely hard that year. Uh, but people fail to realize during that year we, we, we started a whole lot of young kids, a lot of freshmen, a lot of sophomores. You know, we've had some teams that were, were really good with a record that sometimes didn't pan out the way you want them to. And we've had teams that we weren't as talented and we, we went on. You know, a prime example of that, I think, is the, the second year we played for the state championship. I, I, 
I don't know that we were a state championship caliber team, but our kids believed they were, and we went back and, and tried it again another year, but at least made it to the finals. And how awesome would it be to get back again? On paper, we got a lot, of, a lot of a lot of potential. We got a lot of good players coming back. I think that we've got some key players that are returning. I think that you know, if, if everybody stays healthy, if everybody continues to work and keep that team concept by not caring who gets the credit, I think we could have a great year.